So you would like to stream to Twitch TV using open source broadcast software, otherwise known as OBS. I'm going to help you set up your OBS today. So the first thing you need to do is go to OBS in Google and Google OBS. And then you want to go to their web page. Then pretty simple, just click download. It'll take you to a SourceForge page and it'll it'll give you a countdown. And then you can download it. I'm actually gonna re-download just because I may or may not have the latest release, so be done in a second here. And then uh, you want to run this program. As you can see, I've already have already have some monitor captures and whatnot going on. I'm going to show you uh, how to set this up though, right from the beginning, or right from the start, I should say. So there's a few things. Um, if you've ever used XSplit, OBS is a little different. Um, right here in the settings panel, there are different options you have right here on this side. And if you go down to advanced, you can set different things like how fast your computer actually encodes your stream, which changes the quality of your stream. So like if you have a bad computer, you want to set it down lower like super fast, very fast. This is something you're going to have to play with over time. Everybody's computer is different. Everybody's computer is is not the same in how much you can process. I personally only have a dual core, three gigahertz processor with four gigs of RAM. And I can stream on very fast um, or faster, depending on what I'm streaming, on 540p. If I'm streaming with my PBR, I can do faster with 540p. If I want to do 720p, I have to be in super fast or ultra fast, otherwise I'll get frame drops. So that's something to keep in mind. I know this is a lot to take in, especially for a new user. Most of this other stuff down here you don't have to worry about too much. Um, we'll go over to the audio settings. This is where you want to select your microphone that you use, right here. And also, where I stream with my HD PVR2, it has about a almost a two second delay as far as what's being shown on my screen for video and what's actually happening in the game. So I need to set a delay personally for my computer and it's about 1950 or that's about ooh, half of a millisecond less than a, a whole complete second, I guess. I think that's what it is. Um, but that's what worked out good for me. Uh, you may find this varies for you, and it depends on if you're streaming right off your computer. We'll go over here to video settings, and right now I'm set on actually, um, this is like 16, or 616p, not f anything, so I'm kind of like in between 540 and 720p. Um, you can do monitor resolution, which would be your base monitor resolution, and then these numbers get really weird, and you're you're running weird stream um, resolutions, and I don't like that so much. So I just run a custom resolution. I, I set my base resolution at uh, 1080p, and then this lets this drop down box, uh, this combo box right here, actually have different uh, drop downs of that resolution scaled down. So you'd have, you know, your 125%, 150% reduction, 175, half reduction of 1080p, and so on. This is your frames per second box. Now, most streams look pretty good at 25 frames or more. Some people like to run at 60 frames. You can run up to 60 frames. I do have to say, the more frames per second you are sending out to your stream, the more resources your computer is going to use to do that. It takes a lot more resources to encode a 60 frame per second stream than it does a 30. And a lot of people don't understand that frame skips make your stream look terrible. Anyway. Don't worry about your filter. I have never messed with my filter ever. Um, that really doesn't do anything for me. Um, all right, let's go to broadcast settings. All right, right now I have my file put as set as a desktop. Now you can stream straight to your desktop and then you can upload your video later to YouTube and that's how you have commentary over your video. 
So if you want to record your voice over your video of you like playing your game, you can do it that way too. All right, so uh, setting up your stream right here, we have uh, stream hotkeys. You can set it up so your stream can be, you know, like if you push F11, it'll automatically start your stream. And then you can push F12 and it'll stop your stream. So if you're one of those kind of people that just like to stream like 10 minutes of a game and you want to stop it and cut the video to upload it to YouTube, which Twitch has its own uh, video editor, which is actually kind of nice. It, it works good. Um, you can do that too. And then Twitch also uploads to YouTube for you. But if you're just going to sit at home and you want to upload videos from your house of you commentating over your computer, you can do that here. Um, I have mine set for auto reconnect. So if anything happens to my stream, if anything stops the stream from happening, say my internet for some reason gets laggy it's happened before and the uh, internet cuts out a little bit it'll automatically restart my stream so that way it doesn't stay off now you have different modes here live stream and file output now I this is your live stream options you can do Justin TV uh, Vagen live uh, good game are you I don't know how to say that uh, daily motion cash play YouTube you can stream to YouTube with this uh, cyber game TV Hitbox, Comcast TV, uh, you can do all that. Now, the next box down is the servers that you can um, stream to. A lot of these servers, most of the time, are going to be fine no matter where you stream to, honestly. Um, you'll find that usually the server closer to your house is better off you, but it's not always true. I find that different servers, when you're streaming on Twitch, um, Twitch has this weird thing where there's like a... Um, like a buffering, uh, it's hard to explain, but when somebody's watching your stream and you're getting a lot of viewers, it usually kind of goes away, but at first, a lot of times it's hard to watch people's streams, even if they're streaming at a really low bit rate, which most people should be able to watch, but a lot of internet companies throttle speed to Twitch. Um, usually if you have uh, quality settings on your Twitch, which is something they've introduced to, for people that have more than 50 plus viewers, you'll get quality settings. Most of the time that'll, that buffering will go away, but Generally speaking, I, I stream anywhere to Dallas, Texas, Dallas, Texas to uh, New York. Sometimes you'll find a, a server um, is just having issues, and you'll have to switch it once in a while. So just keep in mind that you know different servers will help you out. All right, um, I think we're done with this panel. Let's go to the next one. For encoding purposes, generally speaking, um, I was recording to my desktop, so I was using 550. But generally speaking, if you're running a uh, 480 or 540p, which is actually very, very common in Twitch sometimes, um, and, and you want it to look good, around 1250, around 1250 is pretty good. Um, you really don't need to go too much higher than that. Um, if you're going into 720p range, you kind of want to double that. You want to get into like the 250 range. There is almost... I'm not exactly 100% sure, but I think there's almost twice the pixels in a 720p stream than there is in a 540p. It might, might not be twice, but it, it's at least, it's a lot more. So if you want your stream to look good uh, for a 720p stream, 1250 isn't bad. Now, this number is variable. You can change it. If your internet can't support a 250 kilobyte upload speed, um, that is up to you. I mean, honestly, where you can stream at, is is really key you know and then also like i said with this um with this um cpu p preset if you have the computer that's like a boss if you have like a four gigahertz quad core eight core and you can run medium and slow man that is all the props to you because i can't do it but that will make it so you can set your max bit rate down quite a bit more and it'll actually make the game um especially if you're playing online like multiplayer uh anything call of duty Anything kind of shooter game, the lower you set your max bit rate, the less you're going to lag in the game. I mean, honestly, the lower you can set it, the better. Uh, you want to play with this. You want to do a couple preview streams. You want to see where you're going to be at. Um, all right, so let's go to audio. Now, you have two choices here. You have AAC and MP3. And honestly, they're both really similar. If you ever listen to audio from AAC or MP3, they're very close. I prefer AAC. I feel like it sounds a little tiny bit better for the bitrate that you use. So you can actually run, I feel, a lower bitrate on AAC than you can on 
MP3. So what I would do is 128 for MP3, and I would do uh, 96 for AAC. I feel like they sound just about the same. All right, so let's go back to general here. Now, general, you don't have to do anything here, I don't believe. But let's go back to broadcast settings one more quick second, and let's go back to live stream. All right, so after you have figured all that stuff out, and you need to get your live stream key, right on the front page of Twitch TV, it'll show you the feature games and all the other good stuff. And then if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, it says, Cool additions. And anybody can do this. Let me pause this real quick. And anybody can do this, it's free. So what you want to do is click get started. As long as you have, you have to make a Twitch TV account, but that's it. And uh, this is the download link for Open Source Broadcaster. This is XSplit. We'll be going over XSplit after this in the next video. Uh, then you have Wirecast. This doesn't get used as much. I, I have no personal experience with Wirecast. And then we have Evolve, which is something I actually haven't heard of yet. Um... Anyway, that sounds really cool too. I just read that. So, right here it says looking for your stream key. You can find it on your dashboard. And what you want to do is if you click that, it'll take you right to your stream key. And then what you do is you see this right here. It says don't show this key to anyone because if somebody else gets your key, they can stream on your channel, which is... Which is 100% true. If, if somebody types in all that random data that when you click on show key, I'm not going to do it. But when you click on show key, if they type in all that random data, they can pretty much stream on your own channel without having any permission at all. So you definitely don't want to share this key with anyone. And you don't want to give it out to anyone unless they're setting up your stream for you or somebody you trust. All right. So let's get back into OBS real quick. All right, here we go. So, after you set up your stream, you're gonna want to capture your game. And uh, I'm gonna pull up some random game I have on the computer real quick, just to show you how you can capture your game. Um, I don't know if I actually have any games on here. Um, there's gotta be something, hold on a sec. All right, let's just say, let's just say I wanted to play my PS2 emulator, right? I'm going to start that up real quick. So, what you want to do, we'll just say these two don't exist and we'll make a new one. You want to take your mouse and you want to right click with your mouse. And then you want to add scene. So you can type whatever, you can write PS2 emulator. I'm going to write PS2 emu. So now you have a whole new scene. And you want to click on right here, and you want to right click again, and you want to add source. And you can do different options for this, depending on what you have for a game, and what you're trying to capture. I can tell you right now, the HD PVR2 will not, you cannot import the video from HD PVR2. So what you want to do is do a window capture and then you click on that and you can type in, you know, whatever you want, you know, I'm just going to leave it as window capture. <clears throat> so for this specific instance, it's going to actually capture this window right here, right? So you can do inner window, entire window, all that. You can set your gamma control and this is actually the brightness of the, the window itself. Um, most of the time you don't have to mess with anything. You can make it kind of see through a little bit. So you got that. Okay. Now your window captures here. So pretty much that's all you need. Now, if you set up your stream, all you have to do is click over here and go to start streaming, which I won't let me because I'm on file output only. But if I go there and then go to live stream, I can actually click on live start live stream. Another thing you can do too is preview your stream. And this is going to put a load on your computer. All right, so it's already telling me it's taking way too long to encode. But another thing I want to show you is 
when you get your um, video in the corner of your screen, you can click on uh, properties or actually position and size, and you can hit resize to fit screen. And it'll actually make it full screen for you too. Or, you know, if you want to adjust the screen, you can um, reset cropping. I don't know what's going on with it lately. It hasn't let me do that. But you used to be able to drag and, and drop where you wanted stuff. So we'll just say, you know, that's that's the way you want it. And now all you had to do, I'm going to stop the preview. All you have to do is hit start record, uh, start streaming, and it'll automatically stream to Twitch TV. This is um highly handy. Anyway, so the last few things I have to talk about here are the plugins menu, which you have direct show, game capture plugins, microphone no microphone noise gate, pre-scene volume plugin. Uh, most of the time you don't have to do anything with that. None of this really matters for me, personally. Uh, you have your global sources. Uh, I've never actually done anything with this. Um, on the main screen of this OBS program, you have your volume controls as well. I forgot to mention. Um, this is your microphone volume. This is your actual game volume or your system volume. So say that you're trying to talk on your stream and you find that the game volume is overpowering your microphone because maybe you're a quiet talker. Um, you can just simply turn down your game volume right here. And you can turn it down to like 10 and you'll be super loud on your microphone or you could be overpowering your game volume. So you could turn down your microphone a bit and it's super simple to adjust. Alright guys, I really hoped you liked this video, and if you did, please leave a like. It really helps out my channel, and a thumbs up. I really appreciate it, guys.